A new twist in the Pilbara drug baron case. Mm, this is Port Hedland narcotics kingpin, Nabil Bazzi. The enterprise in Chapa used a pizza bar as a front for an elaborate drug smuggling operation before going to jail for a decade and coming out with a completely different business model, using a Soils Ain't Soils franchise as a front for an elaborate drug smuggling operation. It just ain't gardening if it ain't Soils Ain't Soils. Bazzi has just started serving a 21-year sentence after cops realised he was selling more than Brickies Yellow from his landscaping supplies business. I'm actually doing very important work too, I'll have you know. I'm not just standing around, mate. He's 44. The good news is that when Bazzi does get out, he will only have to deal drugs for a couple of years before he qualifies for the age pension and can enjoy retirement without the imposition of having to cut down meth. Get off my lawn. But he could be in for longer than he expects. Turns out, allegedly, that old mate Nabil tried to bribe the man who was the star witness in the police case against him. The cops had turned one of his drug couriers, a bloke who was found with seven kilos of meth in East Cannington, and convinced him to testify against his boss. You put a wire on him, and you find out who's selling him drugs, and then you get that guy and you flip him. We aren't going to name the supergrass because he's also doing time inside, and as we all know... Snitches get stitches. Bazzi's now facing even more time in jail after he was charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice. He was booked for that offence in June, six weeks before his drug trial began in the district court. Police reckon Bazzi personally delivered bags containing almost $100,000 in cash to the rollover witness's family in the hope that his one-time business associate would give evidence that would be beneficial at the trial. What happens if he's found guilty of that? Attempt to pervert the course of justice carries a maximum seven-year jail term, so it could be 28 years behind bars. He'd be out when he was 72. He's already done 11 for the pizza bar, narcotics bar, so all up he'll have spent 39 years or more than 70% of his adult life in a jail cell. You reckon Brennan Stack will learn faster than Bazzi? Don't count on it. We're talking about a man who did this to a woman after all. The former AFL player is serving three years for that attack. He's also been hit with a prohibition order which bans him from going inside any licensed premises for four years. That sounds good, but the bulk of the ban means nothing because it starts while he's in jail. And this Chateau LeBlanc 68 is supposed to be served slightly chilled. There are not many pubs inside Hakia, at least not legal ones. I'll take that hooch. The prohibition order expires in March 2026. Stack will have been out of jail and free to go to a pub for only a year by then, so it's not much of an extra penalty. Prohibition orders banning thugs like Stack from pubs and clubs have been around since 2007. They were brought in as part of an overhaul of the Liquor Act, which was commissioned by the then Minister for Racing and Gaming. Those laws paved the way for the small bars we expected would allow us to enjoy an aperitivo like sophisticated Europeans. But it would clearly take more than one generation to alter Australian drinking culture. A racegoer has ended her long day of celebrations with a bizarre stunt. There are clearly a lot of dickheads like that woman west of the Nullarbor because Brennan Stack is one of more than 300 people currently banned from entering boozers in WA. We're now handing out prohibition notices like confetti, but it wasn't always the case. We used to be far more targeted. Between 2007 and 2009, only six orders had been issued. The first guy they wanted to stop drinking near citizens was coffin cheater Eddie Withnell. That was back in 2007. Eddie was running the Voodoo Lounge strip club back then and the cops thought it was a bad look. Withnell fought it for four years but eventually hit a brick wall. Police also went after Nunzio Labianca because of his underworld connections. Haven't heard that name in a while. Well, we're not working as an actor, film producer and plasterer. Nunzio ran Northbridge Institution, The Rock which was appropriately named because that's what was usually thrown at you if you stayed there drinking long enough. By 2010, a couple of handfuls of people had been issued with a notice. By 2013, that had jumped to 150. Troy McCanty was one of them by that stage. So was 120 kilogram kickboxing rebel bikey Lee Lee Famafu. And I seriously apologise if I mispronounce that name. Nick Martin got one, as did Olympic boxer Adam Forsyth and a trio of Comanchero bikies, Nathan Greenway, Ray Silly, and David Kinnean. So there are some bizarre reasons for them being issued too. 
Boulder City full forward Darren Bradshaw, who's the brother of Sydney Swan Daniel Bradshaw, got one after he bit a man's ear off at a fight at Monty's Restaurant on Hannon Street. And a few years ago, a guy got one after punching a 10-month-old baby outside Inaloo's The Saint. The first woman to be banned was a former V8 supercars grid girl turned Perth Wildcats dancer. Les Murdy glamour model Eva Scalaro listed singing, presenting and emceeing as some of her many skills. I am fabulous with a microphone and great at any ad-lib situation, she said on starnow.com. Eva was also pretty handy in a pub fight. In 2010, she smashed a glass into the face of a 26-year-old woman after first grabbing the back of her dress and pouring her drink all over her. That was during a period in which glassing was the pub crime du jour in Perth and hotels started using tempered glasses that shattered like a windscreen. The glass Eva used wasn't one of those, unfortunately, and her victim required a lot of surgery. Scalaro didn't waste any time after completing her six-month sentence. She was reported to have been ready to release a biography called Former Model, which was a weighty term about overcoming adversity. She was top female fitness model at the International Federation of Bodybuilding in Indonesia, a clothing designer specialising in high-cut bathers, and she even released her own single, which contained the telling line, I don't know right from wrong. So there's hope for Nabil Bazzi when he gets out of jail in 2050. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.